Kubernetes was the anchor project for CNCO, but over the years, both the technology and the culture have evolved. Kat, more broadly, how do you see this community? How do you see its maturity, its challenges, and its opportunities? Uh, I would certainly say that it is mature at this point. Um, there's a lot of jokes made about like Kubernetes is going to be 1.x forever. Um, and you can you can make some probably incorrect assumptions about the maturity of Kubernetes based on the fact that it's still just 1.x. But the, the ecosystem in general is mature. Kubernetes is the second largest open source project in the world behind Linux. Um, so we're we're definitely not small. We're not we're not little anymore, and we're underpinning a, a fairly significant amount of the world's digital infrastructure. So certainly Kubernetes is at a point where I would call it mature, and the ecosystem in general I would also say is getting pretty close to mature if it's not already there. There's still a lot of change to do. Um, we have a lot of sprawl, you know, like Atlanta as a city. The center of it is not that big, but it stretches like for seemingly eternity throughout a significant portion of the state of Georgia. Uh, Atlanta is where the next KubeCon is. And the, the cloud native ecosystem is kind of like that, too. It's kind of like swallowing up other parts of, uh, you know, just digital technology. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, it certainly introduces some challenges with respect to like deciding what your stack is going to look like when you're building an application, uh, because there are just simply so many choices. If you look at an image of the CNCF landscape, it is ridiculous. It's overwhelming. It's massive. There's like a dozen tools in any given category, and it can be really difficult to know where to start. So I would say that that is our biggest challenge. It's just kind of, it can be unapproachable if you're not already entrenched in it. Yes, that's true. Kubernetes has really become one of the biggest open source projects after the Linux kernel. The growth and adoption are clear, but even with that momentum, there are still some pain points. And these pain points are the ones that most people don't even see. They are not aware of these. Ken, what are some of those challenges you think the community still needs to work through? Um, as a Kubernetes maintainer, yes, there are some. Kubernetes is 11 years old now, and a lot of the original maintainers, the original committers are still around. And I myself have been around for a while too, right? It's been, it's been six years, five years. And there, there's definitely a cultural problem where we forget that we're not a small project anymore. So we can't just like do cowboy stuff all the time. We can't do whatever we want anymore. And we forget that other people's perception of the project is different because we're all friends. We all know each other and have known each other and worked together and hung out together for a long time. So it's it's easy for us to forget that newcomers don't have more than a decade of like social context into how this project works. So we're experiencing some some growing pains now where we're realizing we have to document a lot of things and processes that we never felt we had to anymore. Um, the, rele the release team is made up mostly of people who are new to Kubernetes, and many of them are new to open source in general, period. So we've been making a lot of assumptions about what people know uh, that turned out to be incorrect. Uh, and we're, we're fixing that now. But I think any open source project starts to experience that at a certain point of growth. Uh, it gets to a certain size, gets to a certain... Uh, degree of being relied upon by other companies where you go, wait, hold on, this is not just like me and 15 of my best friends anymore. This is me and 15 of my best friends and 300 strangers. And it uh, you, you have to change the way you work a little bit. Now, Billy, it's your turn. I would love to hear your thoughts on this from your side at Akamai. Yeah, well, it's interesting hearing Kat's latter perspective on that of you know, the growing pains and stuff like that, because for one, that's just a good problem to have. But the other part is that from my perspective, the Kubernetes project has been a marvel of maturity for a very long time. It exemplifies the whole concept of open source and in particular, the community aspect of it, that the project always did very, very well at that, comparatively. There may be Kat and others that 
have different opinions at different points in time. But when you look at, for example, there's a lot of companies that want to say, hey, we love open source, we support open source. There's influencers, podcasters, whatever. But when you look at their actual behavior in the ecosystem, it's, it's not led by community. It's transactional, it's missing the point. So Kubernetes being something with this really good governance model and the way it's opened up to contributors, it set the standard, if you will, for standardization in a way to make it extensible for all these other companies to just plug into it. And then in addition to these conferences that have just been enormous for years, that literally bring in everyone from hobbyist developers on a, more of like an activist mission to be completely vendor neutral and open source and supporting in that way, all the way up to large enterprises. And we're all coming together at a connecting point and we're talking about and excited about open source and the real actual community aspect of it. And then you look at just how enormous the project is, how many committers there is to it, and it's just going, it's going and going and going. This has set the example in addition to the concept of that ecosystem, the foundation to support it and keep that thriving and the different sponsorship models. It's incredibly mature and has been for a very long time in my perspective and is one of the better things we have going for us in that regard. Do you see it as a fundamental technology like the Linux kernel, or is it more of a phase where something new might come along and replace it? No, I think Kubernetes is always going to be foundational for the CNCF. Like it, it is the basis for the cloud native ecosystem. All of those tools interact with and rely upon Kubernetes. Um, I don't necessarily think that Kubernetes is broadly a foundational tool in the same way that Linux is. Um, we may start developing applications in a different way 10 or 15 years from now, and Kubernetes will become obsolete or uh, we'll do what we usually do with technological growth. And we will build some kind of abstraction layer on top of Kubernetes that doesn't really replace it, but it's so abstract that you functionally don't know, care, or realize that Kubernetes is there underneath that abstraction layer, which is how basically every leap in computing has worked since the ENIAC machine, right? It's just an abstraction layer that makes you forget that you have to interact with this previously annoying, really complicated thing. So like, maybe um, Kubernetes could become foundational in that way, um, like broadly across computing. But for the CNCF within that context, yes, Kubernetes is foundational and it always will be because that stuff doesn't work without it. it it's just Kubernetes has to be there. I don't see it going away anytime soon. I would agree that it's foundational and will continue to be as long as we continue doing the cloud computing thing because it filled in where there was a gap and providing that layer of abstraction and making it simpler to be more vendor agnostic and to be more multi-cloud. And again, you know, for those who understand what problem it solves, these developers or companies or combination of the two, they have a use case where they can benefit from a microservices architecture and where their culture can benefit from that. And then you have Kubernetes as that orchestration engine in the middle and with the abstractions and the ability to iterate and make development easier and all of these things that just make the entire model of cloud computing easier. As long as we're doing that, I think it's a staple in our lives. <laughs>